Hello, I'm going to do a read aloud for today. Um, I know you guys love the true false books, so this is called True or False Amphibians. So I'm going to be reading and then asking you to guess true or false before I read the answer to you. So this is called Amphibians. It's written by Melvin and Gilda Berger. And it's a true false book, so I'll be asking you and then you answer. True or false, all amphibians live on land and in water. Make a guess on that one. Turn the page. That's true. Amphibians are animals that generally spend their lives part in water and part on land. Almost all are born in lakes, ponds, or streams. And as adults, most amphibians leave the water to live at least some of their lives on land. Some continue to live near water. Others settle in places far from water, but most return to water to lay eggs. The word amphibian comes from the Greek word amphibios, which means living a double life because they live in two places. All right, you ready for your next question? Here we go. Frogs and toads are the most common amphibians. True or false? You have an answer? True. Frogs and toads make up the largest group of amphibians. These two kinds of animals are very similar, but there are some differences. A frog's skin is smooth and wet, but the skin of a toad is dry and bumpy. Also, most toads are chubbier than frogs, and many toads live far from the water. And here's a little caption down here. Frogs and toads make up nearly 90% of all amphibian species. Toads jump like frogs do. True or false? Think about how they jump. Do they jump the same? Hmm. False. Toads cannot jump nearly as well as frogs can. In fact, toads rarely jump at all. Most of the time they walk on their very short legs. When attacked, frogs usually use their long, powerful hind legs to leap away. Toads sometimes use their hind feet to bury themselves in the ground to avoid predators. And there's a little caption down here. It says, most toads make their homes in gardens, fields, forests, and jungles. All right, here comes your next true or false. Brightly color frogs are usually poisonous. True or false? True! All brightly colored frogs have poison glands in their skin. Any predator that tries to bite one gets a mouthful of bad tasting liquid. Sometimes one bite is just enough to make a predator let go of the frog. Other times the poison is actually strong enough to kill the attacker. The tiny poison dart frog is one of the most dangerous of all amphibians. You can see this picture I don't really love because it has a snake in it. Some South American Indians hunt with arrows dipped in frog poison. Frogs and toads are always easy to see. True or false? Like This one's pretty easy to see. Do you think they're all easy to see? False. Many frogs and toads blend in with their surroundings, making them hard to see. Their skin is natural colors, like green or brown, just like their environment. This camouflage often makes it easy to hide from snakes, their worst enemies. It also helps them catch crickets, worms, and other animals they like to eat. Most frogs and toads grow a new skin every few weeks, and then they eat the old one. Oof, it's kind of gross. And if you see here, there's a snake. I can't really see. There's a toad right there hiding. All... Frogs and toads call and croak. True or false? Do they all make noise? False. Only male frogs and toads call and croak. This happens mainly in mating season. The males gather in ponds, swamps, and other wetlands. They puff out their throats and force air over their vocal cords to make the sounds. The females hear the males calling. Bullfrogs make a deep jug o rum jug o rum sound true or false here we go frogs and toads lay many eggs at a time in water true most female frogs and toads lay lots of eggs at a time in water generally they lay the eggs and swim away however some carry them on their backs for safety the water keeps the eggs from drying out the eggs which do not have shells are covered with a jelly that protects them. Large clumps of eggs stuck together are called frog spawn. And you can kind of see in this picture, she's carrying them on her, or maybe she's gonna carry them on her back or she just laid them. Fully formed frogs hatch from eggs, true or false. So when the egg, when the egg hatches, 
Is that a frog, a little baby frog in there? Hmm. I think you know this one. False. Generally, larvae hatch from the eggs. The larvae are called, you know this, tadpoles or pollywogs. They have small heads and long tails and look nothing like their parents. For some other species, however, tiny froglets hatch from the eggs. And it says tadpoles can breathe underwater through gills. Tadpoles become adults all at once. True or false? So look at all those tadpoles. Do they just turn adult or do they change? What happens? I think you know. False. Tadpoles can take up to five years to change into adults. Wow, I didn't know that. Although most reach adulthood within three months. As the larvae develop and become larger, they grow hind and front legs and lose their tails. At the same time, the larvae develop lungs so that they can breathe air. Now they're finally ready to live on land as adults and have young of their own. It says larvae usually eat algae, algae while adults usually eat insects. Are you ready for the right next true false? Frogs and toads sit in the sun to keep warm. Do they do that like a snake does or like a turtle? True, sitting in the sun helps frogs and toads warm up. That is because frogs, toads, and all other amphibians are cold-blooded. Their bodies stay at about the same temperature as their surroundings. If the weather gets too cold, the animals are not able to move around. In winter, many go to sleep in holes they dig in the ground. You can see this guy has dug himself a hole. Some amphibians take a long summer nap when conditions get too hot and dry. Most frogs and toads are small. True or false? I got this one wrong when I previewed the book. True, frogs and toads are generally smaller than most fish, birds, or mammals. An average frog or toad can fit in the palm of your hand. One of the smallest frogs is the Brazilian gold frog. This tiny creature is only about as long as a house fly. It's a teeny tiny and weighs less than a ping pong ball. Little grass frogs are the smallest North American frogs. Salamanders are lizards, true or false? Think what you know about lizards already. Are salamanders lizards? False, salamanders are amphibians. Lizards are reptiles. The two kinds of animals are sometimes confused because they look similar, but here's how you can tell them apart. Most salamanders have moist, smooth skin and short toes and they lay their eggs in water. Most lizards are dry and scaly, have claws on their long toes, and lay eggs on land. Most salamanders have four toes on each front foot and five toes on each back foot. Ooh, interesting. All salamanders have tails. True or false? I don't know this one. Hmm. Do they all have tails? True. Salamanders have very unusual tails. If a salamander loses its tail, it grows back. Sometimes a predator, like a snake, Owl or turtle grabs hold of the amphibian's tail. To escape, the salamander drops its tail and runs away. In time, the salamander grows another tail that's as good as new. Adult salamanders can take from about one to three months to grow a new tail. Okay, all salamanders are small. True or false, you think they're all small? That's false. The biggest salamander? And the biggest amphibian of all is almost twice the size of a toddler. And a toddler means like a two-year-old. So really big. The salamander that holds this amazing record is the Chinese giant salamander. When fully grown, it can be as long as six feet from the tip of its nose to the end of its tail. Chinese giant salamanders spend all their time in the water. And here he is. Wow. It's kind of creepy looking, isn't he? Chinese giant salamanders find prey by smell and touch, not sight. Can't barely even see their eyes. Salamanders are most active during the day. True or false? Do they like to come out at night or do they hang out in the day? False. Salamanders usually stay out of sight during the day. They spend the daylight hours hiding in rotten logs, among fallen leaves, under rocks, or in similar places. These cool, dark, humid hiding places keep the salamanders moist and safe from enemies. Spring is the time of year when you're most likely to see salamanders. And you know I found that newt, which is a kind of salamander. 
just last weekend, which was in the spring. And it was also under a log, just like that. Salamanders are fussy eaters. Do you think they're picky about what they eat? True or false? wonder what they like to eat. False. Most salamanders will eat just about anything they can catch. Their main diet includes insects, spiders, and worms. When food is hard to find, salamanders can go for a long time without eating. The tiger salamander is one of the biggest eaters. When it's hungry, it will even eat, eat, it will even eat other salamanders. Oof. Salamanders have sticky tongues for catching food. Look at that, he's eating a worm. Newts are salamanders, true or false? I think I might have given this one away just a minute ago because I caught a, uh, we saw a newt last weekend. And we let it free. True. Newts are a kind of salamander. They have tails like other salamanders do, but theirs are flatter. Their skin is often drier and bumpier. Some female newts lay eggs one at a time on plant leaves under the water. They use their feet to wrap a leaf around each egg. The young hatch from the eggs and return to the water. Some called Fs, live on land before going back to water. Wrapping eggs keeps them safe from predators. Well, that's interesting. I never knew that about newts. A mud puppy is a large salamander. True or false? A mud puppy. True. Mud puppies are large salamanders that are found in Mississippi, Georgia, and other parts of the United States and Canada. Most live in freshwater ponds, streams, lakes, and rivers. They swim among water plants, eating small animals, and fish eggs. Mud puppies are active at night and in the winter, too. Mud puppies keep their feather-like gills all their lives. So this is a picture of a mud puppy right there. Sicilians are worms, true or false? False. Sicilians look like large earthworms, but they are actually amphibians. Sicilians have the same smooth, moist skin as most other amphibians. Most live in tunnels that they dig in the ground. A Sicilian uses its strong, pointed head to dig itself quickly into the soft earth. Sicilians have mouths full of sharp, needle-like teeth. Ooh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Sicilians live only in the tropics. True or false? Tropics means places with really warm weather. True, Sicilians are found only in hot, tropical places. They are rarely seen because they generally live under the ground. Their eyes are tiny or covered with skin or bone and almost invisible. Their sense of smell and touch help them get food, find mates, and avoid being eaten. Tiny feelers below each eye help Sicilians touch and smell. Many amphibians are endangered. True or false? Do you think they are in they're in danger of disappearing from the earth. True, many kinds of amphibians are having trouble laying their eggs and raising young today. By cutting down forests, draining swamps, and building houses and roads, humans are destroying the places where amphibians live. Oil pollution and acid rain are spoiling the clean water that amphibians need to survive. Nearly one third of all kinds of amphibians are in danger of disappearing. Ooh, that's really sad. It's too late to save the amphibians, true or false? I think you know the answer to this one. False, there's still time to save endangered amphibians. Experts are studying the problem. Many adults and kids work to clean up the land and water where amphibians live. Governments pass laws to save the amphibians' habitats. Some set aside protected areas where amphibians can make their homes, find mates, lay eggs, and grow in number. More amphibian species are endangered than any other animal group. Look at that text feature at the back. There's an index for this book. It's a really long index, too. So that is the end of True or False Amphibians. I hope you enjoyed hearing a nonfiction book today.